Hey everyone, it's Tiffany. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Tiffany, and welcome to the tribe. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the end of life. More specifically, what a patient goes through when they are at the end of their life. I'm going to put a quick disclaimer uh, for those who don't like to heat like the topic of death or end of life in general please skip this video because what well, because this does mention words to death and end of life so if death is not something you are comfortable with hearing then I would not recommend you watch this video when a patient is at the end of their life they will do they will do certain things that a lot of their loved ones will not understand. This includes all senses being sensitive to light, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. For example, if a patient were to be in a dark room because the light hurts their eyes, then let them be in a dark room. It is at the patient's request. Towards at the end of life, it is the patient's request to be in a dark room, to not have any visitors, to not hear loud noises, because even if something as small as a whisper can hurt their ears, because that's how sensitive the hearing is. And the light, just like this, can even be can even hurt somebody's eyes. It can hurt a patient's eyes, especially when they're at the end of life. This light, as low and dim as it is, can hurt a patient's eyes if they are at the end of life. certain smells like hamburg like their favorite foods they used to eat such as hamburgers pizza fish that becomes sensitive and that makes them sick touch sometimes uh, patients when they're at the end of life can't feel when a patient is at the end of their life they go into themselves they go more into themselves and they start feeding off the spiritual stuff. This is 100% normal for the patient when they are at end of life. It is okay not to eat because it is not a physical energy that is needed, but a spiritual energy. It is hard for a loved one, for a patient's loved one to grasp as they will try and get the patient to eat, to drink, to do whatever. But you need to remember that a life is passing on and all the patient wants is comfort towards the end of, at the end of their life. They do not want any fighting. They do not want any arguing. They may not even want any visitors. This is all normal. A patient, especially if a patient does not want visitors, it is completely normal because a patient, because that's when they draw away from the outside world. They draw away from newspapers, they draw away from TVs, they draw away from social media, their phones, etc. All of this is completely normal when a patient is passing on to their spiritual, their spiritual being. I have a lot to say about the end of life because I experienced it. I was a caregiver for about six months, I want to say. For about six months, I was a caregiver. So, so I ended up watching a patient. I was there for the patient towards at the end of life and at their death. The reason for this video is for educational purposes only. I am not a medical professional. 
nor do I claim to be one. Although I have extensive amount of training in medicine, and I know that both universal and federal laws of medicine very well, I am not licensed. And this video is to be used for educational purposes only. I have a podcast called The Wounded Healer Podcast, and I will also speak about the end of life on The Wounded Healer Podcast as well. But I thought I'd make a video of it first, kind of explaining how end of life works, because I know there's people out there who do not understand end, end of life and how they want patients to live and try and force them to live. And you can't, the thing here, here's, here's the thing with, with death. Here's, well, with life, you can't force it. You can't just shock a patient back to life if they're near the end. Especially if they have a DDNR, which is a do not resuscitate order. That will hurt the patient more. If the patient were to do, were, if the doctor, the medic, or whomever, who, a professional for that matter, were to resuscitate a dying patient, they would have to crack their chest to do so. And that is more painful than when a patient is passing on. When the patient is already in pain, physical pain, and they cannot take it anymore. I know I'm not just making this video for certain people who have been harassing me, but I know this video, but this video is for everybody who don't understand death, who don't understand the end of life. This is an educational video for those who do not understand the end of life process. Again, I'm not licensed, speaking from what I've experienced. I will do more content like this, but I will also go back to doing my own content that I used to do and that you guys used to see, which is unboxings, vlogs, etc. But I think it's the time to do some educational videos. So that will be what this channel is going to be a little bit about. If you also want to go check out the Wounded Healer podcast, that link will be in the description below, along with everything else that I have. I'm not doing this for likes, for views, or for sales. I'm doing this to educate people. Because some people do not understand the end of life process. And they may not ever understand the end of life process, and that is completely okay. Because it is on their spiritual conscience. Thank you guys so much for your support. I am coming back stronger than ever. Sending you guys love and good vibes.